welcome to Beyond the Surface, the podcast. From the ancient practice to its modern day symbolism, we dive beyond tattooing and its connection to our inner selves. I'm your host, Caroline. Welcome. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Beyond the Surface, the podcast. I am so grateful to have you here after a long and much needed break. I was sick during the holidays, so completely lost my voice, but again, now I am back. As you can see, today is a really special episode because we are joined by Marcella, and she is a spiritual tattooist as well, and she brings in amazing energy with her clients and makes sure that everyone feels comfortable. She is in LA and I am so excited for you to hear what she has to say and her perspective on spiritual tattooing and how it's needed in the industry and how we can bring it back together as clients and artists. This episode is sponsored by Working University, a holistic provider that embodies the essence of mind and body wellness. Here you will embark on a journey that just extends Far beyond the conventional. You get to know yourself on a deep holistic level through trauma healing, breath work, movement, and just so much more. So thank you so much, Work in University, for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And whether you're out walking, whether you're at work, at home, drink some tea, hot cocoa, whatever you feel like in this moment, and let's go beyond the surface together. Okay, welcome everyone, and um, thank you for being here. I wanted to do a podcast with um, Marcella on just an episode really on spiritual tattooing, and she's the first guest on the podcast, which is really exciting. Um, So Marcella, can you introduce yourself and just let us know a little bit about who you are as a person and what you do? Hi, Caroline. I'm so grateful to be here with you today. Thank you so much for inviting me on. Of course. It's such an honor to be talking about spirituality with tattoos. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a realism, black and gray, and color tattoo artist from mm-hmm. Los Angeles, and I am currently working on building community around mm-hmm. spirituality and tattooing. <laughs> Yeah, we're together on that one. It's um, we just talked previously before the recording started about building a community and showing other artists as well as clients that you can get tattoos and you can build a tattoo community with spirituality included. That it doesn't have to be so rigid. It doesn't have to be this old idea of a basement with. Um, a guy with horns um, tattooing it can be um, people like us and especially women coming through and building up the community and just showing up more authentically and showing who we are and and the spiritual side of us Um, so I think that's great what you're doing so what um what is occupying your life right now Besides think- building an amazing community. <laughs> I think that's what's actually taking up the most of my time at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. I feel last year I hit the surface when it came to really diving into spirituality and I guess spiritually coming out of the closet. And just not being afraid to really go in depth as to like, what I have to offer aside from tattooing Mm -hmm. of just having spiritual knowledge and self-awareness and really wanting to share that light with everybody and start to really build an uplifting community. I feel like it's very needed in our industry because it's, there's a lot of, 
male toxicity, masculine toxicity, and it's time for all of the goddesses to arise. <laughs> yes, I agree. So how do you how do you do it? Do you build it online or do you have like a physical community that you're building? So right now I'm building online. Mm-hmm. So I had actually I had first started with just putting out like inspiration quotes about once mm-hmm. a week of yeah. just, you know, going through the motions of getting into growth and getting into really getting to know yourself to be present with what you want out of life and to really know that it's tangible for you. Yes. And I had just created actually the day before yesterday a broadcast channel on my Instagram and yeah. I'm basically going to be talking about just inspirational quotes and you know like all things tattooing like any questions that people have for me about what spiritual tattooing is Mm -hmm. and a lot of people actually do ask me that of what does that mean exactly yeah and it could be very different for everybody I say for me it's of really expressing yourself with tattoos intentionally yeah a lot of the artwork that I have is for me to know that I have protection divinely and yeah. to remind myself of the power that I have to just create a beautiful life and to uplift others to do that. So that's what spiritual tattooing is to me. I think it's amazing. <laughs> and I think it's amazing that you were saying, you know, you're building an online community, which is what I'm doing as well. And I'm really grateful that we have well, that we live in a time where it's tangible to reach out to so many people that, you know, with the broadcast channel, I think is an amazing way to reach out um, and build a community. And I think we can reach like the niche that we want way easier online than maybe physically, um, especially here in Denmark I don't know what it's like in in LA but um we don't really have that many spiritual tattooers here we don't really have like um physical tattoo studios where it's like come in and and feel the vibe it's more of a like a walk-in kind of experience so I think it's amazing that we're able to build a community online and be able to show people exactly what you're mentioning like experiencing the spiritual side of it and also um what I think is amazing you mentioned about sharing quotes and stuff is I've seen a lot of artists including my previous self only showcasing what we do and not the person behind and getting to know an artist through their content is like you can tell so much about them which is why when I found you, I was like, oh my God, amazing. Because as an artist, I think we shouldn't be afraid of showing who we are either. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, some people within my like physical realm, tattoo realm, they told me, don't put your spiritual stuff up. Like it's going to repel some people um, who could otherwise be clients. And just knowing that I don't want to attract those people. I want to attract soul clients. Period, um, girl. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's amazing to be able to share it with people and having a platform. Like when you go on to people's Instagram or, you know, Instagram is like the main one for tattooers, I think. Um, but really getting an idea of who they are and what they stand for, oh, that is so amazing. But spirituality aside, like, you have so many beautiful pieces on your Instagram. So obviously you're very creative, but have you always been? Like, when did you know you wanted to become a tattooist? Oh, girl, that means so much to me. Thank you. (laughs) I actually, I've always been very creative growing up, but... Mm -hmm. 
I feel like it really came to me when I was in my second year of college. Mm -hmm. I was actually studying business and fine art. So, yeah. And um, I really wanted to dive into getting into galleries and being like a clothing designer at the time. Oh, that's very different. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect my life to unravel the way that it did, but thank God. Yeah. And I had a classmate, she was like, have you ever thought about tattooing? And I really hadn't. No. And she just really planted a seed in my brain. And I went online and I just started tattooing at home. And I'm like, this is not the way to do it. Like, I need a... I really want to learn how to do this professionally and really pour everything in into it because I fell in love with it immediately. Yeah. And that's when I had gotten my apprenticeship and I did my apprenticeship for about a year. But yeah, that's how I got into it. I was yeah. in my second year of college. Yeah, I think every single tattoo artist started with doing it at home. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, I don't really, and and also like when I got my my apprenticeship um, a while back, um, they were like, "Have you tattooed before?" Um, and obviously I had, but I didn't know if it was illegal. Like I, yeah. I was like, "Is You're it? Like, should is I okay? lie right now? We're telling yeah, the truth." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, the path that you least expect is sometimes the best. It is um, incredible, but how did you how did you find your style? Because um, if any tattoo artists are listening, we all had the same thing in the beginning where we didn't really know what to do. I myself remember going through like several periods of like, okay, this is my style. This is what I want to do, um, and then. A month later, I was like, no, 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 no. This is the style I want to do. So how did you, like, how long did it take you to find your style? If you have found one, because I know a lot of people as well, they just like doing different things. So that's a lot of questions in one, but how did you find your style and how long did it take you if you found one? I feel like that first year, I definitely went through what you're talking about right now of just going back and forth to like just different styles that we see online and like how we can curate our own. I feel like personally, because when I was in college, I was studying realism. It was only like natural to transition realism into tattooing and my mentor I intentionally looked for a realism artist. Mm -hmm. So I guess it was a little bit easier for me because of the reason that I was already studying realism. Yeah. Um, I think transitioning realism into tattooing, though, it's like a whole different ballpark because you want some, you want to articulate something that looks good on someone's body rather than on canvas. Yeah. So you really stu- you're about studying like the body's anatomy and like where things look good and like how things complement certain people. So I think yeah. it was mostly about that. Yeah, but thankfully my mentor guided me through all of that and he was really there for me to really curate something for myself. Well, huge on realism. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Uh, realism I I like doing micro realism sometimes but mostly I do ornamental stuff and I have the biggest respect for the people who do realism like knowing like mostly (laughs) like the lighting knowing where to put the shadows like having so many different ink cups I like respect, man. <laughs> oh, girl. I, um, thank you so much. I think we have the same respect for you because, I mean, personally, when I look at ornamental, it's just like 
huge perfection and the way that you guys yeah. articulate that on the body it looks so beautiful so yeah we have the same respect for you girl well, <laughs> it's I'm amazing what you do that. do have you ever had any feeling of um just in terms of what we spoke about about you know showing who you are and like like taking back your power and really getting into the art have you ever felt inadequate in the tattoo business as it is, like the tattoo industry? Or have you always felt supported by your peers and, and colleagues and mentors? Um, I would say when it had came to the point where I wanted to bring spirituality into my career, I didn't feel supported at all. Yeah. I feel like I was very much in an environment that I felt like I was put in a box of like you have to be this this and that and mm -hmm. if you get out of that box then you're gonna say goodbye to a lot of clientele yeah like just because I'm expressing who I really am and I was like fuck that I'm yeah. not about to repress who I am any longer. Like, that's the, kind of the whole reason why I even got into tattooing was to just unravel who I am with my life, not to put that away in the closet. Exactly. So, you know, we grow out of our environments and no shade to them. You know, they have the awareness that they do and I have my own and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody just has a different mindset when it comes to the industry and what we're doing. But I'm no longer putting myself in a box. And I'm also not going to play the victim because I'm going to take my power back. You know, yeah. I was aware. I was aware of everything that was going on. I was aware that I was suppressing myself. So there's not a day that I'm going to play the victim because... I took the acknowledgement and the power to get myself out of there so that I could truly build something that was authentic to who I am. Yeah. So I just encourage everybody to do that. If you feel like you're in an environment that you don't belong there anymore or that they're suppressing who you are, it's time to get out of there. Oh, and it's big cool. in the industry, you know. Yeah. yeah yeah we had the same thing with um in terms of connecting tattoos with spirituality and how it might repel somebody but um instead of focusing on the negative stuff I've been surprised that um at least my peers haven't been like oh that's amazing you'll be able to really get your dream clients and and get really like the people you want to work with um so I'm really happy that that we are you know more artists that want to bring in the spirituality um but when was it for you because you're mentioning like the breaking point of feeling like you were hiding yourself and you wanted to bring in your true self and and spirituality like at what point and how were you thinking of bringing in spirituality I would say for me, for me, my breaking point was a little bit over a year ago mm -hmm. where I, I could just feel it in my soul, girl. Like I was very triggered as to where I was because I just wasn't able to express myself that way. And I had looked into going into other shops, but mm -hmm. I felt like at that point in my life, I really needed to be alone. Yeah, um, I needed to really dive back into myself and really ask myself what it even was of how I was going to express spirituality with my business. And once I took the leap to leave and I have my own private studio right now in West Hollywood. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's it's when everything started to unravel because I wasn't suppressing myself anymore. and. What that looks like for me is showing up online the my most authentic self of yeah. being very vulnerable with talking about stuff that we go through as artists 
or, you know, just really talking about the way we feel of navigating our business and our artistry, it could be very taxing. So having a vessel where you could express your pain and express your healing is like the fucking juiciest energy yeah. that you could ever get out of life. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's amazing how much it gives you um, as a business owner that you know <sighs> that you just share everything. Um, and as well with clients that you know you don't have to put on like any facade, you don't have to be anyone else. Like I remember in the beginning, I was like, I need to be very professional. I need yeah. to be like, not Caroline, but the tattoo artist that's going to do the specific design. And I had my questions down and like, okay, where do you want it? Okay, good. Next thing. Um, whereas when I started opening up and embracing myself as a person and combining the two like me as a person and what I do for a living um it just opens up for the cut like the clients as well that they feel more safe um it and really does like, yeah I'm sorry go ahead no no no. you didn't interrupt at all I was just saying like it's really nice when when clients can feel safe like have have you noticed a shift in when you started bringing in your own personality to to what you do? Oh, yeah. When I took the mask off, I was building connection, like, the second that my conscious decided to do that. Like, yeah. the connection just in the session was indescribable. Like, these people, you know, they're already in such a vulnerable spot of getting tattooed and mm -hmm. you know they these people naturally open up to us so yeah. I think when we are vulnerable ourselves and take the mask off it invites the energy for people to do the same thing and that's what community really is is to not hide parts of yourself and really just wake up in the morning and know that you're going to be your most authentic self, that's power because you yeah. start to, it's like a domino effect. You just start to, I wouldn't say domino effect, actually. Like you just naturally start to attract the kind of people that do that already. And I call them like yeah. soulmate clients yes. or dream clients because they're the people that have that same juicy energy. And even then, aside from people that have that, there's people that look for that. There's people that look for people that just are very authentic and true to who they are because they're scared themselves to do it. And when they see somebody in front of them just taking their mask off and being like, this is who I am, take it or leave it. They're like, yes. damn, I'm like, me too. I should do that too. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's way more fun as a business owner to work with people who are open to receiving and giving as well. Um, because what most people don't understand about, um, I wouldn't necessarily say especially as, as a tattoo business owner, but we talk a lot with clients and they open up so much. And for me, it's really a sign of trust when people open up to me and I always receive it um, with like such gratitude. But if I were to just be my professional self, I don't think people would open up to me. And, and so by having this dynamic of you know, you showing up as you in in your business as a, as a tattoo artist and attracting the clients that like that, you automatically have this like dynamic. And we sit a, like for a long time with some people, like 20 hours, 30 hours, whatever it might be, we have clients coming back and and it's just really nice to have clients that you know, okay, I can just relax. Yes. I don't have to be just like a, a blank canvas. And I think that's, that's what 
what's attracting people nowadays is like as we spoke about the Instagram thing that's like our front page that's like our business card and some people might not like it but some people might be like okay no when I saw your page I was like no this is you um so that feeling is is amazing but when we spoke about this earlier as well before the recording um some people might not know how to approach um spiritual tattoo artists because it's like what is the difference yeah um, and you said you know bringing in authenticity and you just really showing up as who you are but let's say i'm a completely new client and I'm in the area where you are and I find you on Instagram. How would you um ideally want me to to reach out to you and what can I expect from you as an artist? Like what can I expect from the sessions and and like how it's going to go down? That's a great question. I usually have people um I have a little highlight on my page and I like communicating through email. I feel like mm-hmm. it's just the more most efficient. So I usually have my clients either describe exactly what they want and then give me size and exact placement that way mm-hmm. I know how I'm designing the tattoo. And most people have I guess um like reference pictures and some people actually don't like whatsoever mm-hmm. they're just like i want you to create something for me do whatever you yeah. want yeah so even then when people give me reference pictures as well i ask them if they are open to me completely customizing a piece through email mm-hmm. and once they give me the go i'll let them know about given the size that they want for the tattoo um the estimate and about how long they're going to be there and I tell like if it's a longer session I usually work on bigger tattoos so mm-hmm. I'll tell them to bring water, snacks and you know like a blanket if they want to as well. I would say the day of I highly recommend like any other artist for you to be well nourished before you come in so we don't have anybody passing mm-hmm. out. Um while they're doing that, I'm really big on setting the mood. So yeah. when I get to work, the first thing that I do is light my incense and light my intentional candle. Nice. So I just I need to be in that vibration of mm-hmm. almost like I would say ritualizing the session before they come in mm-hmm. of me just being in the energy of having the gratitude that I get another day to create and I get another day to really be myself yeah. and, you know, have these affirmations going and have my music playing. Sometimes I like very soulful music. Sometimes I listen to my gangster shit. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on the mood. Yeah. Um, I already have like a vibe flowing for myself before mm-hmm. they even come in. So that way when they're already there, they start to align with that energy that, that I'm already in of feeling comfortable mm-hmm. and everything. So and show them the design. And I would say 99.9% of the time, people are completely open to how I design stuff. It's very rare for people to be like, oh, I actually want to do this or that. Yeah, Um, I'm really grateful that I attract the people that really just let me express myself. Yeah, Yeah. that's the dream, hey? Like, people, like, the biggest thing a client can ever tell a teddy artist is, I trust you feel free to do what you want. Like, that is the ultimate. Oh, yeah, girl. It's better than sex. (laughs) Yeah. Like, okay, (laughs) damn. Like, yes, you just want to give them anything. It's like, thank you so much. Because a lot of times people come in and they say, yeah, you know, you can do what you want. And then we do what we want. And they're like, yeah, well, 
can you remove that? Can you remove that? And then it's back to the reference photo. So like yeah. actually having people who who say you can you can do what you want or I love what you did. That's amazing. You know, let's go with that. Yeah, but I, feel I like love you like, setting the, the mood. Yes, girl, it's so important. But yeah, I feel like as us as artists, like hearing that of just I trust you, do whatever you want. It's like the biggest turn on for us. Yeah. <laughs> because when you tell us that, we just run with it and that's when you get like your best tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> but I also get a little bit nervous when people say it cuz it's like like I know that the tattoos I make are like my clients when they come in for example for the first time they expect what they've seen on my Instagram and yeah. because I've made it I know I can deliver but having people saying you can do what you want it's like oh my god fuck yes and at the same time it's like oh my god I really what can I do to to make them feel even better like what can I do to make it like the best session ever um yeah you want to give them the same energy back yeah yeah and I will say this on behalf of every artist if you give us love we'll give it 10 times back so like yeah it is so nice to have people come in and respecting the studio and just joining in on the energy for example if we've lit up some incense and we've got some music going to like anticipate in in that feeling um instead of like there's nothing worse than um an angry or like um not annoying client I would want to say but just people who come in and they don't let you do your thing for me oh, that is yeah. like the worst it's like why did you come to me then if, mm -hmm. if you don't trust me so there's like the two different ones so to everyone be the dream client be the one that trusts us because yes I would I would say we know what we're doing for exactly. sure yeah I, I feel like people like us have like very little micromanagey people that come in and I, mm -hmm. I say that because of like what we have on our page, you yeah. know, of just um, not only like the spiritual aspect of what we're putting out there, but of having very customized work already. And when they see that each person is going to come in and get something authentic for themselves. Yes. Like, thank God that most of our clientele is that energy. I am I am very grateful and I think it shows that there's a need for spiritual orientated artists um out there that it's not that's at least the feedback I've gotten and I th I think it's the same for every spiritual artist is there's such a need for people to feel valued and not feel like they're just a number or like a a paycheck they need to feel like we welcome them and we're there for them and we're here to answer any questions they might have and give them time if they feel like crying. Like I could imagine you might have had some people getting emotional with with incense and stuff and just us providing a space for people to know that now it's them, like they're the ones in focus they're the ones who are being nurtured right now um I think there's a huge need for that and I think it's amazing that you're doing it um it is amazing yeah, yeah. both of us are just really welcoming people to a new space I feel like um you know I feel like over here in LA as well like you said like you are in Copenhagen is that how you pronounce it Copenhagen yeah so it's very similar like it's a lot of walk-in shops and mm -hmm. you know it's still mostly like tattoo I mean tattoo appointment based but mm -hmm. it's very very rare to find safe spaces like what we're providing and I yeah. mean safe spaces in the way of 
just really having an environment of people being able to not have the anxiety of going into a tattoo shop and it feeling like intimidating anymore. Yeah. I think Um, that was the main one that I wanted to get rid of was the intimidating stuff. mm -hmm. Like it's so common still for it to be like big guys sitting and being like a little bit like not, not just like heavy demeanors, like heavy, very heavy energy. Um, Mm -hmm. Of like, what do you want? Like, okay, this is the placement. I don't recommend it anywhere else. Like this is, like I'm the artist, trust me. And it it's kind of I don't know. It, it's just repelling to me to when artists say no, you know, trust me. I know what I'm doing. You need to you need to get this tattoo this place or this way. It's like, dude, you're not the one getting it. Like, listen to no, your client. Yeah, I agree. It's like it's so important for them. It's very much like. I don't want you to tell me that I trust you. Like I'm here wanting to get tattooed. Can you show me instead Mm -hmm. of telling me how Mm -hmm. I can trust you? And that could be with maybe I don't feel comfortable getting tattooed in that area. And Mm -hmm. I want to change it to here. It's like, okay, you know, we want to do what's best. Obviously we're going to tell them what the best placement Mm -hmm. is for specific things, Mm -hmm. but it's of, What's vital is to have an open mind every single time you tattoo to go in with an open mind. Yeah. Because that is where you have the most beautiful sessions. And when Mm -hmm. you have that open mind, you create more trust, you create more community, you create more connection, and you'll most likely create an even more badass tattoo. Yeah. (laughs) For sure. Do you have any way that you would recommend people preparing for their session? Like, you know, as you said, you're preparing the space with some incense and whatever music you feel like on that day. Um, Do you have any way that that your clients or any clients out there can um, prepare themselves for the session, even if it's not a spiritual one? Yes. I'm huge on just being well nourished because Mm -hmm. I have had people pass out on me before and I end up asking if they had eaten or if they had drank in water or even as little as having a smoothie before coming in. And every single one of those people had not had anything that day. Yeah, biggest mistake. Yeah, it is vital to... Just be well nourished when you come in. And also Mm. me mainly doing larger pieces. Um, I tell people to bring snacks with them and to bring water. That way in between breaks, they could, you know, get their sugar levels back up and feel hydrated. And luckily I work in the city. So there's a lot around as well if we need to take like a little Mm -hmm. break to eat because they're just not feeling well. I want them to know that they feel safe doing that as well because I'm not going to be tattooing them in an extremely uncomfortable situation and make my clients feel like we absolutely have to get it done in this time Mm -hmm. frame because I want to be able to provide Mm -hmm. something for them that just feels very comfortable and you know if we need water breaks if we need a break to eat something in between Mm -hmm then let's go get lunch together yeah and we'll come back and keep going and you know it's important to have that <laughs> yeah I don't think people like it's almost become a cliche thing from from tattoo artists to say like you know eat some food and drink some water before you're getting them but there's a reason why we say it yeah. um and most people they think oh it won't happen to me because you know, I'm in good shape or I've had a good sleep or whatever, but it can happen to people without them even knowing. Like I once had a guy um, who was like, we were doing something on his chest and all of a sudden he was like, whoa, like I need to sit down. And we had to wait like 
10 minutes and then he wanted to try again and I was like no 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 like just sit there for like 30 minutes god damn like just chill yeah. and eat something but he I think he was afraid that I was getting annoyed but I was like we can keep on trying this but we'll just get the same result so just get something to eat um yes exactly. it, it can yeah. happen without you knowing it and all of a sudden like once you felt sick it's just not nice if you're pushing yourself like and and also um when you're on your period yeah nourishing yourself and bring an extra blanket or some extra snacks or like preparation yeah. is key i think so i think I it's agree, really good yeah. tip. I feel like we're definitely a little bit more sensitive than we usually are mm -hmm. when we're on our periods. Like, I'm talking about, like, physical pain. So, yeah, I definitely recommend, like, anything that makes you feel more comfortable just to bring that. And I, I'm huge, like, on bringing blankets and everything because, yeah. you know, we just want to feel, like, nice and comfortable and just feel good that day yeah and it's also it's nice for the artist to have a client who's relaxed that well at least for me it makes me re more relaxed if I have a client that's like tensing up and um they're on a diet so they, they don't want to eat or anything it's like it's making me nervous yeah so having a client that's like falling asleep listening to music or reading a book that's like oh okay, I've created a space where they feel like they can do that. Um, yeah. I think that's a really big honor as well. It's, yeah. But it's it's really nice to to talk with somebody who who's on the same page because I don't know if it's because we are females or if it's because we're just, like, you know, bringing in that spiritual and holistic aspect. but like making things comfortable like having blankets like do you need a snack or anything like that is such a big part of my sessions is like do you need to like go pee do you need some water do, can I bring you some tea do you want a blanket um that is yeah, like it's, it's important <laughs> for us to I feel like be catering in that way because I think we know ourselves how uncomfortable tattooing can be yeah. So I think that's why we're both that way because of just knowing how uncomfortable it can be and how painful I yeah. want to provide you the most comfort because you're going to be uncomfortable. It's yeah, gonna there's hurt. no way of pushing it. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're already <laughs> going to be like, <laughs> so uncomfortable. Why not make it as comfy as possible? It's like, exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think I have that was a lot really of candy good. at the shop too. So, yes. just in case the sugar levels go down, I have like this whole little snack bar. Ah, oh, that yeah. is the dream. <laughs> yeah, we usually get candy at the shop as well. Um, but I tend up eating like I tend to to eat up all of it. Um, so so definitely, that's like a big budget. Of like yeah. having to, to get snacks, but it's it's important and it's it's really nice. Yeah, it is. So um if people wanted to book in a session with you um and they know how to do it, where can they reach you? Like on Instagram or Facebook, any platform. I have all of them. Um mm -hmm. I actually my biggest platform right now I would say where people reach out to me and find me is either Instagram or TikTok. Oh. So TikTok. Yeah, TikTok I've I actually didn't even expect to have the level of clientele that I did from there until I started posting face more often. Yeah. I feel like on both TikTok and Instagram, people want to get personal. People want to see who you are. People want to mm. see what you're about. And it's just not about just tattooing anymore. Yeah. It's just, you know, if that's your thing and that works for you, that's awesome. For me, 
it doesn't work for me anymore. So I'm at a point where I'm just really unraveling every part of who I am when it comes to my clientele. And I've come to realize of just how fruitful it is to just show up as yourself, to yes. show face and to talk about things that are kind of scary and vulnerable because it just creates that space for people like, wow, like she's really doing that. She's, I feel more comfortable going to her now because she's not afraid to talk about real shit. <laughs> yeah. And that's important for people to know, like, <clears throat> to know that we're not just like nerds sitting in a basement tattooing all day. Like we're actual human beings wanting to, to interact and, and talk about anything like I've had the some of the weirdest conversations of my life with clients because you just you just open up and you get so personal like physically yeah so why not open up and I think that's that's really amazing that you're showing that and especially on TikTok I know it's a really big thing um I haven't managed to get anything going there um yeah, so I think that's amazing that you did that it's, you would love it I yeah. would highly yeah and they would love you back because <laughs> especially you just have such a beautiful energy and like your aura feels so soft girl <laughs> people look for connection is something that yeah. I've just realized in going deeper into my journey is that people look for human connection whether it's emotional or through artwork or through inspiration you know yeah. whatever that is for us I think that's our highest thing and like that's gonna bring us like the highest vibration in life to all of us is that we all yeah. seek connection so when you align with somebody especially your tattoo artist it's just a beautiful thing that's gonna unravel it really creates a beautiful relationship and it creates amazing tattoos as well because you're just in that like juicy ass yeah. energy exactly. <laughs> like there's such a difference in in the level of energy both you as an as an artist as well as I would say the client's experience when you're completely aligned and it's just like flowing and you're like bouncing off ideas of each other and and just connecting whereas if you have clients where or you know connecting with the teddy artist where the energy is just not there like you yeah. can tell the friction and it's a really yeah. quiet connection <laughs> so I know, like, yeah. yeah it's it could it's be nice. uncomfortable when you don't align with them and yeah you almost nearly want to rush through the tattoo just because it feels so uncomfortable like unsettled yeah. but it's usually clients that are very micromanagey about what you're doing yeah um, no, it just does not work for me at yeah. all <laughs> like at I, all no girl same here I usually um even after just recommending what I feel is best there has been times where and this has actually only happened to me one time mm -hmm. where I really felt like I wasn't aligning with this person as to what they wanted for their tattoo. Mm -hmm. So I told them, I'm like, you know what? I want you to feel the happiest about this piece. And because we're not aligning, I'm going to give you your deposit back. And I recommend this person right here. And I think you guys will align a lot better. And the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, you should be very picky with what you want on your body. And I'm grateful that you're being picky because then I know how to navigate this as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't think this is good for either of us. I don't want you to regret what you're doing. And, you know, let's send you off here and I think you'll do better here. And they built this mm -hmm. amazing connection. And it's like a lot of tribal stuff and mm -hmm. it wasn't something really along what I'm doing yeah since it was more towards the beginning of my career I was taking on stuff like that just to you know like mm -hmm. I guess feel yeah. well-rounded 
Yeah. And, you know, it'll come to you when you want to feel well-rounded that it's not aligned. Like, just do stuff that is aligned to what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's really, it's confirming when you as an artist say no to people. Um not necessarily because you don't like what they're getting, but you can often tell when the vibe is off. Like I had a woman one time um, messaging me every 20 minutes, like, you know, saying, why don't you answer? Why don't you answer? And I was like, (laughs) I'm in the middle of a session. Um, And I had to tell her, you know, we don't align and basically gave the same speech. Like, I want you to be picky. I don't think I, um, can be the artist that you're looking for but I recommend this and and this other person um I suggest you go to them instead uh, because the results do um show up when you don't feel the connection because we as an artist we don't feel safe expressing who we are as a person um and we don't feel safe um like showing our style in the design because we're like have you chosen it's like the biggest thing for me at least it's like have you chosen me because I'm a tattoo artist or have you chosen me because I'm me as a tattoo artist and I think there's a big difference yes um, yeah I so agree for you to to talk about the alignment is so important for the clients as well to listen, not just the artists, but for the clients to know that you can be as picky as you want and you can book in a session with an artist and then get cold feet. You might not get your deposit back, but that is, you know, that's a whole different story. But feeling aligned with your artist is so important as well, not only for you and the results and the tattoo that you're getting but also for the artist as well um because we don't want to have a shitty day knowing yeah. that it could be different both yeah. client and, and artist um i think luckily it's good that you could feel that very early on like just even in the phase of messaging each other before Mm -hmm. they actually come in that you could feel it like almost immediately it's like okay well I'm either gonna tell them um that I don't do this kind of work and I'm very much focused on this type of style Mm -hmm. so I feel like someone that is tattooing the type of work that they want would fit them better and they would have Mm -hmm. a better outcome so of just having that honesty as well and who knows like for me the times that I have told people that they're like okay well I'm actually open to getting the style that you want with the idea Mm -hmm. that I have and that's what it is it's about really being honest and who knows like this person just might let you do whatever you want because they didn't know exactly what they wanted yeah (laughs) yeah honesty between the artist and the client is so important because you can create so much more when you are being honest and when you find that soul client soul um artist connection um so i think it's really beautiful what you're doing and i think it's really important for artists to be more proud of what they do um in the beginning it might be tough to say no to clients based on um, you know, them wanting a, a, a style that you don't like doing. Um, I think we've all known that feeling of like, I just need my business to to be working. Um, and yeah. then once you get it going, you can kind of say, okay, no, now I have the privilege of either telling people that I want to customize it and make it my style or telling people that this is not what I want to do, but I recommend this other artist. Um, yes. And, and and that not, like, the cash not being the sole price. Once you move oh, away from yeah. that, the designs become just so much more different. Um, they do. I feel like we open up so many more doors for ourselves, like, when we're not focused on the money, you know? Mm-hmm. We obviously... It's a tool in life, I feel like, that is always going to be there. 
Yeah. It's not. I think when it comes to artistry, when you are more open to soulful connections and are more open to just showing up authentically, mm-hmm. that is when you're going to meet abundance. Abundance is going to meet you right there where you are. Yeah. And prosperity is going to meet you right there. You're going to have clients that without a doubt question whatever estimate you have for them because that is where your energy is yeah. and that is money honey <laughs> yeah yeah and it, it's an honest exchange of of the value that you're giving um and you can tell like especially what i've experienced is when i change my energy um i've had people come in inquiring about um a style or like a specific size and they ask me the price and I tell them they're like oh I thought it was going to be like four times more I was like would you have paid that and they're like yeah it's like how I can't really judge oh yeah um yeah it it, I've definitely gone through that as well and it's like it feels really good that people would pay even more and then it also gets you to reflect on that there is people that are willing to pay your dream prices. Yeah. I would call them. Of like not feeling like I feel like sometimes as artists we feel like we may not deserve that or we may not be enough because we mm-hmm. compare ourselves to other people but yeah when we start to align with that energy of our dream estimates our dream clients and to know that it's tangible for us it's money honey because we're providing a lot of value we're providing you know the knowledge that we have over the years of tattooing but they're also paying for an experience yeah it's not just the tattoo it's like I bring a lot of value and you saw that value in me And I'm going to thank you by giving you the best tattoo that I can today. Mm. And they'll feel that energy. So exactly. It's a beautiful exchange and um, bringing in the spiritual aspect of it and just holistically um, providing some extra juiciness to the sessions is amazing. Um. But thank you so much for sharing everything. Um, If you could um, talk to your dream client and um, bring in some energy, is there anything specific? Do you have any offers that you want to give to them or anything that we need to look out for in in, um, your community or your online presence? I would say to my community that I'm very thankful for the support of you guys being there with who I presently am today and really diving into having a soul aligned clientele. And I just want everybody to know that I recognize that and that it amplifies me to dive deeper into what I provide for you guys with my artistry because that's what it's all about of really diving into my knowledge more and diving into learning more about my artwork and that you're always going to be provided an amazing experience not just an amazing tattoo but you know a very 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 soulful connection (laughs) amazing yeah yeah that spoke to the soul um it really did thank you well if people then want to reach out to you um what are your handles we will write them down in the description um and everywhere where the the clip is going to be posted but can you just quickly provide your like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, where people can reach you? Yes, so I'm on all platforms the same. It's at Marcella Tattoos. Yes. Easy. easy. (laughs) (laughs) 
well yeah oh my gosh caroline i had so much fun with you today i um me too i can't thank you enough for the honor it is to be talking about all this stuff and well it makes me really emotional that you're creating a safe space for spirituality because it's rare to have souls like us out here in the wild in the industry and it feels really good to know that I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah, well, me too. That was like when I decided I wanted um, guests on the podcast, I was like, I don't want just regular artists. Like, I want people to know that, like, we're a, a small community, but it's growing. Like, more people are coming into it every day, and there's a bigger and bigger need for it every day. And like you've been saying throughout the whole episode, like people are in need of connection, um, both in just like in the daily life, but also with tattooing and and getting a piece that they feel aligned with because the process is just as important as the results. Um, So people, if you want to get a tattoo with, um, an amazing experience of incense and nice music, whether it's being spiritual or gangster music. Um, I would definitely recommend you getting a tattoo by Marcella. She is an amazing soul and creates amazing art. Um, so check her out on the different platforms. Again, we will link it in the descriptions. But thank you so much, Marcella, for being the first guest on the podcast and for sharing your truth and for wanting to build up a community and um showing people that there's so much more than than just ink to the skin when getting a tattoo that it's it goes beyond the surface <laughs> it's, You're it's amazing beyond caroline beyond. Well, you <laughs> i'm very honored that you wanted to join and um we'll stay in touch and uh I will share this with as many people as I can. And I just want to thank you. It is such an honor to be hosting these small conversations for people to listen in and getting to know the different aspects of it. Because um, in Denmark, it sometimes is a little bit woo-woo when um, I mention spirituality and tattooing in the same sentence. But I am not alone, people. <laughs> I have my aligned warriors beside me, like Marcella, doing the divine work one tattoo at a time. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you so much. And um, connect with Marcella and look at what she's doing and join her broadcast channel on Instagram and on every single platform that you can and get some of that juicy energy. Um, And yeah, I think that's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining again. So um, much. It is an honor, (laughs) but um, I will see you. I will see you, Caroline. Thank you so much for having me. I had an amazing time today. Me I think too. this energy is really setting the mood. Amazing. So yeah. Have a great day. I want to thank you so much for listening once again. And thank you so much to Working University for sponsoring this episode and the podcast in general. It is amazing what you can do when you combine spirituality and tattoos and create something amazing and again remember that getting a tattoo is a dance between your spirit and the artist's hands so treat the process with respect and mindfulness and an open heart so yes hope these insights will guide you on a path to a spiritually enriched tattoo experience i want to thank you so much for listening if you want to join the conversation join our facebook community it's called beyond the surface the community and let us know how you're feeling about your next tattoo or if you feel like sharing photos or 
sharing your opinion about past experience that was either good or bad and how you feel like it could have been better. If you want to book in a session with me, simply send me a DM on Instagram to Miss Kali Tattoos. You can also send me an email at misscallytattoos at gmail.com and let's have a chat about your next project. Thank you so much for listening and see you next Tuesday. Bye.